guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest project Blaze ROM and this is the version 2.8 official build. The build date here is 14 July 2023 and by the way I have also tried this Cherisway's version 4.10 but there I could not simply adjust the app grid so that's why I'm not reviewing this ROM otherwise it's a perfectly fine ROM it has MIUI camera and stuff and there was no customization for it to be done like from the wallpaper and styles it was buggy so that's why I have switched to this project Blaze ROM and here in this particular ROM we also get two separate versions one is vanilla one is gapps and as always I have flashed the gapps included variant if you don't know what I'm talking about or how to flash this ROM you can check out the flashing guide from the description and let me tell you this ROM also includes the Leica camera and stuff and the MIUI gallery and editor so if you need those MIUI stuff this is the ROM you should choose and in here it doesn't show much thing it only shows uptime and the android version as android 13 in here if you go into the android version you will see the android version is 13 the blaze version is again 2.8 and the device maintainer is out of so huge thanks to the developer of this rom and we have the security update as july 5th 2023 so we are pretty much getting latest security patch here and the stock kernel here is the 4.14 sleepy kernel the SLX status shows as enforcing in the system settings this is how it looks like we have this sweet laboratory and stuff this is the sweet part in general with other roms and we have the high refresh rate you can choose it to 120 hertz all the time and i have been using with it no issues whatsoever and we have the dc dimming the thermal profiles and stuff you can set per app thermal profile by the way let me talk about one thing quickly here because i have already tried the normal n to do and this n to do light i have selected the benchmark and stuff but simply the n to do benchmark is not working like right away i open it it just pours closes so this is how it is i won't be able to show you guys the n to do benchmark scores of this rom because of this and we have the me sound enhancer or me audio direct the headset preset you can actually choose from right here there are a lot more headphone options i have been using it with the utrition the sound quality via the headphone jack is amazing with it and we have the sound preset options these are the options bass booster bass reduction etc and we also have the scenario and the enable hi-fi option is also there we also get a clear speaker option if you need that we have a system updater and you can check for updates whenever there is any one and in the gestures we have the quick open camera the system navigation and gestures in the settings of it we do have the swipe to invoke assistant that is working fine left edge right edge customization and the amount of screen height to be used for the back gesture then the pill length customization is there but no thickness customization in this rom we also have the two button and three button navigation and in the settings we have this hold for assistant and we have the one-handed mode as well and you can customize it if you want press and hold power button action you can choose and the swipe quick screenshot is also there it is working there is the share edit delete and the google lens feature and the prevent ringing option is also there and this is how the home screen actually looks like it looks beautiful the stock wallpaper is this one it looks good to the left of the home screen we have the google's discover page it looks pretty cool and swiping up will get you to the app drawer and scrolling on it it's perfectly fine even on the google's discover page and swiping down will get you to the notification and the quick setting panel by the way the quick setting panel stays dark even the light theme i guess as you can see the dark theme is turned off right now but the notification panel is white that's perfectly fine if you want to take a look at the home screen settings this is how it looks like we have the mist settings right here we have the restart background blur depth and the allow home screen rotation in the suggestions you can disable the suggestions if you want and the app drawer customization is there there's the themed icons app search bar icon level cell drawer and the row height background opacity etc customization in the recents we have the memory info screenshot lens clear all and the shake phone to clear all task then we also have the home screen customization in here we have the add app icons to the home screen double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen while we're scrolling and zooming parallax and the single pitch center and some google kind of customization are there let me go back we have the icons and in here we have the icon packs and you can choose anything from here by the way talking about the widgets yes the subscriber account widget is working there is the clock widget as well that i have added and the animations over there is working perfectly fine but there is no battery widget that i could not simply find over here even in the gf's included variant and of course double tap to sleep and stuff is working perfectly fine no problems whatsoever with it now let me show you the quick setting panel okay so it took a little bit more time because it switched to the dark theme i have added a lot of toggles i have the wi-fi the mobile data of course volte calling and stuff will be working fine if you inside the sim card i don't have a sim card in this device at the moment and we have the bluetooth battery showing up right there but it doesn't show the bluetooth battery on the quick setting panel or even in the status bar that's how it is that's what i have been noticing i have no idea why 
but yeah i can't simply enable it even from the customization settings and the flashlight and stuff is working auto rotate nearby share hotspot airplane mode is there one handed mode do not disturb volume controls battery save word the screen recording is there there is the hevc and the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time with a lot of features and we also have the dark theme the heads up always on display toggle and you can toggle it on or off from here and in the next option we have the ambient display and you can edit and add even more toggles if you want from here and of course the power menu appears like this and you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Talking about the basic things of the ROM, yes, the ROM does have safety net passed right out of the box. So you can use banking apps without any worries. Also, the DRM info shows as L1 here. So you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. And in case if you're wondering about the IR Bluster, yes, that is actually working perfectly fine. In terms of Google Photos, it does have this pixel can backup unlimited photos and videos. So this is a great feature to have right out of the box. And by the way, the recent panel looks like this. We have the screenshot right here, lens and the clear all. And the RAM usage status actually shows up on the bottom. And you can go into the split top mode and stuff from right here. I mean split screen mode. In the settings panel, this is how it looks like. It shows some random text messages over here like the good evening and stuff and these are the stock apps that you will get over here by the way the poco launcher pixart etc was downloading because i was restoring my gold app data backup otherwise you do get the fm radio the like camera and stuff all these things the gallery app and you do get the game space and stuff if you need that and of course you can add any game over here and shows this kind of animation and get the overlay if you want from here let me show you the Leica camera this is the stock camera of this rom and that is just awesome and we have the 0.6x lens, the 1x and the 2x zooming option is working perfectly fine. And if I show you the front camera, let me take a quick selfie. And this is how quickly you can take a selfie. And yeah, it is pretty optimized, I would say. And the picture quality came out to be really, really good. No issues whatsoever. Let me actually show you in the video settings there is up to 4k 60 fps but that will not work it will only work up to 4k 30 fps so do keep that in mind super macro lens is the super macro lens will be working fine no problems with that and there is a documents mode and stuff you can scan random documents if you want and there is a pro mode and in the video settings you can go and you can shoot up to 4k 30 fps again by choosing the white balance focus shutter speed iso and this ev and the lens kind of thing and we have the portrait mode the night mode the 61 pixel mode everything is working fine there is also the vlog vlog pro and the sticker avatars then the super moon dual video every mode is there and you can choose whichever you want to have so miui camera or leica camera is present by default here and that's just an amazing thing now in the settings panel there is the display settings right here we have the brightness level adaptive brightness in the lock screen we have the privacy controls and the control from lock device that's for the google home controls and the shortcuts you can actually choose the left shortcut right shortcut etc and you have to set up this app it shows the google home app and the right shortcut also you can choose from right here and let me go back this is the wallpapers and styles and you get up to like 20 colors for the wallpaper and the basic colors i guess the dark theme themed icons and the app grid is there and you can set it up to 6 by 10. there is the double line clock the now playing and the always show time and info is the always on display wake screen for notification is there and you can schedule the always on display from here if you want then we have the screen timeout up to 30 minutes we have the dark theme you do have the use black theme or the pitch black option for that display size and text you can customize from here this is the android 13 feature and the width customization is there then the colors you can set it to boosted or adaptive as you like it or natural and we have the auto red screen then the smooth display is there 60 to 120 hertz and we have the double tap to wake full screen apps is also there you can set particular apps to full screen or force some particular apps to full screen if you want for some reason the app icons is not showing up over here no idea why but yeah let me go back inside blaze house you will get the customizations and this rom has plethora of customizations if you want to skip this part you can check out the timestamps and in here we have the body fonts first and we do have the big noodle titling and the google sans then we have the oneplus slate and stuff the nothing dot font i am not really sure if it's there i cannot find the nothing dot font i think it's not there but yeah that's how it is we have the sony sketch and stuff all these things and the icon packs are there these are the options then the signal icon styles and these are the options then the wi-fi icon styles are there as well and the icon shapes let me go back to the status bar and in here we have the status bar double tap to sleep battery style and stuff you can customize to these right left icon landscape and other options then we have the battery percentage inside the icon and stuff and we have the clock position you can change it to left right or center and the ampm style you can enable it if you want then we have the network traffic indicator inside status bar items we have the headset bluetooth etc kind of icons 
But then again, I cannot simply enable the Bluetooth battery icon because the option is simply not there. We have the colored icons, the 4G icon instead of LTE, roaming indicator and all other things you can see from right here. Let me go to the next one, which is the quick setting panel customization. In here, we have the brightness slider. You can have it on show always. And the position, you can set it to bottom. I accidentally changed the background transparency. Okay, so this is the transparency that you are looking at over here. And we have the auto brightness icon. Then the height quick setting in lock screen, that's for privacy. And the reticker and app colored background and stuff is there. And the data usage, vibrate on toggle touch. Make heads up less annoying option is there. Inside lock screen, we have the ripple effect, then the lock screen charging info, wake up on plug. And the double tap to sleep on the lock screen is there. You can remember it. And the screen of animation, media cover art, and the pulse customization. Inside system, we have the in call vibrations, then the playback control, volume control, and advanced restart is also there. Then we have the long press power button toggle torch. Parallel space, so you can have two separate WhatsApp accounts if you want with this. And we have the ignore window secure flags, two step icon, then the layout option. And you can have it the compact left leaning, right leaning kind of layout for two button or three button navigation. And invert layout option is there. And we do have the unlock high PC games. And of course, the Google Photos does have unlimited backup right out of the box already showed you guys the wallpapers and styles so moving on to sound and vibration this is how it looks like by the way the volume panel over here looks like this and you can expand the volume panel i guess okay so for some reason it's for stopping the ui it is still connected to the bluetooth by the way so this expansion is kind of not working for me right now maybe a reboot can fix it not really sure but yeah this is how it is but the volume panel normal expansion is actually working and it is still connected to the bluetooth device it is controlling the bluetooth device's audio we have the smart pause now playing the media kind of thing and the vibration haptics then we have the shortcut to prevent ringing noisy notification default notification sound and we have the screenshot sound charging sound and vibration touch sound etc disabling or enabling option but app volume control is also there by the way the mio direct is there again in the system settings in the battery settings this is how it looks like and i would say yes this does not show any info like no temperature kind of info no battery charging cycle or something like that nothing is visible in this battery settings and here let me talk about the battery life i have tested it with the aku battery app and with that i am getting about seven hours of screen on time but yeah you have to remember my battery is very old about two and a half years old or more than that so my battery health is at about 70 5% I would say so with that 7 hours of screen on time is decent I would say the health section it doesn't show up anything because I did not charge it like fully from 40 to 100 but yeah I have charged it a couple of times so yeah overall I would say the battery life is decent and even the screen off you can see these are all estimated numbers but still you can get an idea the screen off or the standby it shows about 17 days so that's a really great standby even the combined use shows more than three days and the fast charging on this ROM is actually working perfectly fine no problems in the security settings this is how it looks like in the settings of it we do get the touch fingerprint to unlock so you can disable it if you want then we have the enhanced pin privacy and the power button is really locks then we have the face unlock and fingerprint and in here let me just set up the face unlock quickly so just completed the setup of the face unlock and in here i have to set the wind swiping up on lock screen and let me show you there is also the app lock i have selected a couple of apps with the app lock i'll show you that so right now let me show you the fingerprint scanner and the face unlock speed with the app lock i'll just double tap in the home screen so that the phone sleeps and by the way, the fingerprint scanner again is working perfectly fine. No problems, but I could not simply find any pickup kind of gesture over here in this display settings or something like that. But yeah, you can of course enable the always on display in case you want that. So I just enable that and always on display looks like this. Yeah, in the lock screen kind of settings, there is no clock customization. There is only double tap to sleep and stuff. That's it. So this lock screen clock, you cannot really customize. This is how it looks like in the lock screen and in the ambient display. So right now it went to sleep in the always on display. This is how it looks like. Looks good, I would say by default. And the finger scanner again is working. Now double tapping to wake is working fine. And the shortcuts you have to tap and hold, then it will work and swiping up for the face unlock. And here, as you can see, this is how it unlocks. Let me try one more time for the face unlock speed. You can get an idea of, so yeah. The face unlock is actually working fine. No problems whatsoever with the face unlock. It's fast, I would say. And here talking about the app lock, this is how the app locking UI looks like. It shows the arrow that you have to tap the fingerprint scanner to unlock the app. And when I tap it, as you can see, the app particularly unlocked. So the face unlock, the fingerprint scanner, and the normal app lock is working perfectly fine. No problems. Now let's talk about the test UFO website. Yes, in here in Chrome, it actually shows 80 FPS. This is the same with any ROM, but it is actually running at 120 FPS with other apps, no problems. So this is how it is. With other browsers, it may show 120 FPS, but yeah, for normal tasks, I would say yes. 120 Hertz is actually working fine. There is no lag or something in the quick setting panel. It is really, really fast 
no problems whatsoever that i have faced even in twitter let me actually show you so twitter has loaded right now so right now if i just scroll once the contents actually load up it actually works perfectly fast no problems whatsoever so yeah in terms of scrolling the 120 hertz it's working perfectly fine even in twitter or facebook or even play store it's working perfectly no issues so overall daily driving performance will be really really good except for this bluetooth kind of expansions for stopping the ui i didn't see any other issues and here are the geekbench score and the cpu throttle test of the latest project blaze rom on the redmi note 10 pro so let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think about the latest project blaze rom i think this is a really good option if you want to have like slight bit of customization with leica camera and stuff this is the one you should choose give this video a thumbs up if you liked it share this video with your friends if you did and subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kd index signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now